Welcome back to So You Really Want to Learn Latin and today as promised we are going to be having another look at our friend Regal. Regal I rule the third conjugation verb that we learn and we showed you in our last video how it goes went through its uh, first four tenses and explained that the principal parts of verbs that go like rego are ones you absolutely have to learn. So today we're just going to do quite a lot of practice on using rego just to make sure that all of that has sunk in and that this little issue about learning the principal parts has really sunk home. So um, we'll begin by just looking at a few third conjugation verbs that we might want to use in our video today. We're going to look at the verb bibble, which means I drink. Bibble, bibbery, bibby. So that's a tricky little fellow uh, to start off with. It only has three principal parts. Uh, but don't worry about that. We actually only need three for what we're using at the moment. So we'll just work with that. So bibble, bibbery, bibby means I drink. Uh, we will look at kuro. Currere, cookery, cursum, which means I run. Uh, duco, ducere, duxi, ductum, I lead. Mito, mittere, misi, missum, I send. Lego, leggere, legi, lectum, which means I read. We get the word legible from that. So using those verbs, we'll just check that uh, we got the various tenses of rego right when we looked at them last time. So for example, if we wanted to write out the present tense of mito, uh, we would know that mito, its principal parts, are mito mittere misi missum. And you can tell by those principal parts that this is a verb that goes like Regal. Okay, so the present tense would be going mito, mitis, mitit, mitimus, mititis, mitunt. Now I just want to make absolutely certain that you know what I mean when I say that using the principal parts of the verb shows us which conjugation it goes like. Okay, now when we began this little journey, we started with amor. And the principal parts of verbs that go like amor go o, ari, awi, artum. And there's that a vowel all the way through. And it's really, really obvious when you look at the principal parts of verbs that go like amor that they are first conjugation verbs. The a is the clue. Okay. Then we looked at moneo and we discovered that verbs that go like moneo are pretty sort of easy to spot because the letter before the o in the verb is always an e. So we get moneo and maneo and persuadeo and terreo and timeo. Okay, so it's kind of obvious that they are going like moneo because they've got that eo feel to them in their present tense. Now the principal parts of verbs that go like moneo tend to go eo, eri, ui, itum. They don't all, but in a sense we can get a bit lazy by knowing that because the verb goes eo, in its first person singular present tense, we already know it goes like moneo. When we get to rego, however, unless you're looking at the principal parts, you can't really know whether, for example, um, duco goes like amo. We, we know it doesn't go like moneo because it's duco, not duqueo. Okay, so that's clear. But what we don't know is, does it go like amo? Is it going o, ars, at, arms, artis, ant in its present tense? Or is it going 
O is it, imus it is und in its present tense. Now, you can't guess that. You, there is only one way to know, and that is by looking at the principal parts. If it is a verb that goes like amo, the present infinitive, in other words, the second principal part, will go are. Okay, like rogo goes rogare, rogawi, rogatum. Duco, however, does not go are in its second principal part. It's duco ducere, with a nice short e, ducere. So when you look at a verb, if it goes eo, like timeo, moneo, maneo, you know its second conjugation. Okay, so we, I think we are accepting that that one is easy. The difficulty is when you're not sure whether it's going like amo or like rego. And for that, there is no shortcut. You have to look at the principal parts. Okay, if it goes like amo, it, the principal parts are going o, are, are we, artem. And if it goes like rego, the second principal part is going Ere, like rego, regere, duco, ducere, scribo, scribere, mito, mitere. Okay. And then the third principal part, that's where you get your perfect tense. And as I have already said, the third conjugation, there isn't really a pattern that you can kind of guess. The third principal part is just whatever it is, and when you learn the verb, you learn its third principal part to get the perfect stem. Okay, so the verbs we've just looked at, bibo, bibere, bibi, mito, mitere, misi, kuro, kurere, kukuri. <laughs> you could never have guessed that one. Um, scribo, scribere, scripsi. Lego, legere, legi. Okay. Right, so uh, back to this business of checking we can get the tenses right. So let's go with mito, um, mito, mitere, misi, misum. That tells us it's a third conjugation verb. So if we were doing the future tense of mito, it's going, if you remember, am, ace, et. So mito in the future is going mitam, mites, mitet, mitamus, mitatis, mitent. Okay. Uh, if we took uh, scribo and we wanted the imperfect tense, scribebum, scribebar, scribebat, scribebam, scribebatis, scribebant. And then the perfect tense, well, we know the endings. These we really do know, e isti it imus istis errant. But to get the perfect tense of a third conjugation verb right, you need to know its principal parts. So, kuro is the one we've discovered is a bit peculiar. Kuro, kurere, kukuri, kursum. So you go to that third principal part, kukuri, and then off you go. Kukuri, kukuristi, kukurit, kukurimus, kukuristis. Okay, so hope that's nailed how the tenses go for verbs that go like regal. Okay, now let's just do some practice at these because, you know, I'm a big believer in just drilling your way through this stuff until it becomes second nature. Okay, so um, if we did some little sentences, I've got some up on my board over there. Um, put a re in templum curebant. Okay, go to the verb first, curebant, third person plural. So we know that our subject is they, or a noun in the nominative plural. If we go to the front, we've got put a re, and we're getting quite good at these now. That's a nice nominative plural, the boys. What were they doing? Kurebant, they were running. So the boys were running. And then we've got in templum. Now, templum is a neuter noun. It means a temple. It goes like bellum. 
And so templum, strictly speaking, could have been the nominative, vocative, or accusative singular, but it's coming after the preposition in, and we know that in can either be followed by the accusative, in which case it means into, or the ablative, in which case it means in. So in templum would have to mean into the temple. So there we have the boys were running into the temple. OK, we'll do another one. Romani molto servos in agros duxerunt. OK, we go to our verb first. Duxerunt. Now, if you didn't know that verb, um, you might be tempted to, to look it up in a, in a dictionary or in the vocabulary for, um, in, in a book like this. And you might be looking under duxo, because you know, there's an X in there, duxerunt. But actually, if you were to look up duxo, you wouldn't find anything because the verb is duco with a C. And that's because its principal parts are going duco, ducere, duxi, ductum. Okay, so duxerunt is the third person plural of the perfect tense of duco, which means I lead. Okay, so it means they have led, they, or a noun in the nominative plural. So we go to our f the beginning of our sentence and dig around looking for a nominative plural, and we've got Romani. Okay, so the Romans, duxerunt, have led. Now, who or what have they led? Well, they have led multos servos. Now, those are very recognisable accusative plural endings. Os, lovely, you know, no kind of confusion over those ones. So, the Romans have led multos servos. They have led many slaves. And they have led them in agros. Now, uh, in plus the accusative means into. And that ending os is an accusative plural ending. And agros comes from agare, which means a field. So the Romans have led many slaves into the fields. And just remember, when we looked at adjectives, we discovered this funny little rule, which is, you know, it's not 100%, but it's pretty strong, that adjectives come after the nouns they describe unless they refer to quantity. And multos means much or many. So multos, servos, many slaves, as opposed to servos, multos. So there we have a little bit of practice for you uh, using these verbs. Um, we'll just do a couple going from English into Latin to really nail it and absolutely check we know what we're doing. So, for example, if you had a sentence such as, the beautiful girls were reading many books. Okay, now if you were doing that sentence, the beautiful girls were reading many books. Your subject is the girls and they are beautiful girls. So we want to put the girls into the nominative plural, because they are plural. So Latin for a girl is puella, goes like mensa, nominative plural, puellae. And these girls are described as beautiful girls. Now the Latin for beautiful is pulche, and you remember we looked at adjectives that end in er, either they kind of drop their e or they don't. And the only way you can know if they are dropping their e or not is when you look them up in the vocabulary, uh, they give you the masculine, feminine and neuter form. So pulke is pulke, pulkra, pulkrum. And you can see the e has dropped out. So, uh, Nominative feminine plural of pulke would be pulkrai. So, pulkrai, pulkrai. Now we're going to do the verb at the end. When we get there, it'll be they were reading. 
but we do that last. Um, now, what were they reading? They were reading many books. Okay, now this is our object. It's going in the plural because we said books. Latin for a book is liber. Now, liber uh, ends in er, so it's one of these uh, second declension nouns that goes either like puer or magister. And when you look it up, you have to know which does it go like. Does it go um, liber, liber, liberum, liberi, libero, libero? Or does it go liber, liber, librum, libri, libro, libro? And the way you find out which of those two is when you look it up in the vocabulary at the back of a book, um, it gives you first the nominative singular, liber, but then it gives you the genitive singular. And for liber, it's liber libri. Okay, boof, the E of liber has dropped out and it's just gone crunching down to libri. So in other words, it went liber, liber, librum, libri, libro, libro. Okay, so the beautiful girls were reading many books. Now the books are our object, so liber, liber, librum, libri, libro, libro, libri, libri, libros. So there's our accusative plural, and they were reading many books. Now, Latin for much or many is multus. We want it to agree with the books, which were accusative masculine plural. So we need the accusative masculine plural of multus, which goes like bonus, uh, and that would be multos. And then because it's an adjective referring to quantity, it comes in front of its noun, not after it. So you'd get multos libros. And then finally, our verb, they were reading. The beautiful girls, they were reading. Latin for I read is lego. We need to know how it goes, so you look at its principal parts. Lego, legere, legi. Lakedom. So it's going like rego, and um, we want the imperfect tense for they were reading, so legebunt. Okay? Now, if that sentence, instead of being the beautiful girls were reading many books, had been the beautiful girls have read many books, the only difference would be the form of that verb. Instead of being legebunt for the imperfect, we would need the perfect tense. But that's where lego, you see, is, is a bit peculiar because principal parts of lego, lego, legere, legi. So uh, we want the third person plural perfect tense of lego, which would be legerum. So, rego, I mean, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's got some perfectly normal little tenses that we've learnt. Uh, rego, regis, regit, regimus, regitis, regunt. Future tense, regam, regace, reget, regamus, regatis, regent. Imperfect tense, regabum, regabas, regabut, regabamus, regabatis, regabunt. And the perfect tense, for rego, it's rexi, rexisti, rexit, reximus, rexistis, rexerunt. But just remember, the endings are absolutely standard for all uh, verbs in Latin. All perfect tense endings go e, isti, it, imus, istis, erunt. But you just need to know where to put those endings. And you put those endings on the end of the perfect stem, and you get the perfect stem from the third principal part. Okay, so there's a lot going on with principal parts and verbs now. You absolutely have to feel confident that when you're dealing with a Latin verb, from now on, forevermore, you always need to know what are its principal parts, and then you can use it properly. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope Rego isn't going to be uh, a horror for you. It need not be a horror because... A vast, vast number of Latin verbs go like regal. Uh, but that's a little bit more practice. 
Um, next time we're going to move on and show you how questions work in Latin. Uh, but until then, uh, keep practicing away. Uh, I do obviously recommend that you get um, the textbook so that you can work your way through the exercises. Um, but also just, you know, this book, any book, get some practice down. I'll, um, I've done some practice exercises for you which you can get to linked uh, in the comments below this video. Um, but, you know, the more you practice, the better and the easier it becomes. And uh, I will see you next time for more videos here on this channel. Do leave me a comment below if you've got anything to say, things you are having trouble with, things you need help with, and I'll see you next time.